it's just after midnight on the or just after the anniversary of Katrina and being from New Orleans it's my city the only city I'm from well traveled around a lot my whole life but from there you know I thought it'd be appropriate to make a uh, flat earth video explaining buoyancy because I came up with a new theory on how a light bulb okay is essentially a vacuum tube okay and it's got big metal piece on the end and it's got little tiny guys in here that are called filament but overall this structure doesn't weigh much and the theory was that our vac our light bulbs mass produced with this big hunk of metal on the end where they could simply have a couple of springy brass clamps or a single collar and a single pike using a lot less metal making it a lot easier to change them in and out but we've all accepted this as the standard light bulb design with a big old screw guy right here right okay so talking about whether or not vacuum in the form of a cathode ray tube, you know, like a little TV set. If you take that tube out and you built a big enough one, could you make it float? up in the sky like a fake star you have your electronics box or whatever I mean it really wouldn't be hard to do okay but then there's the issue of okay you're supposed to be doing flat earth theory right well on a gravitational model on a heliocentric model, buoyancy works just fine. Everything's being pushed. Sorry, I'm barely able to see around the camera, so I'm kind of like drawing lines. I'm like, oh shit, that's not where I wanted to draw the line. All right. Gravity pushes everything down into the center of the ball, supposedly, right? And that means that basically, if you're on the surface of the ball, Oxygen molecules are very, very dense down here relative to the dispersion up here. Okay. So if you have a balloon that has less dense molecules, it will settle up where the molecules of equal excitement and density are up here. Okay. Same thing with water. Under the sea, water, as you go down towards the center, okay, as you go down towards the center of the earth, water gets denser. So things that are denser sink. Oil floats on water. Oil is less dense than water all makes sense right but see what occurred to me is actually there is no difference between this heliocentric understanding of buoyancy and what would actually occur on a flat earth see on a flat earth we're supposed to be moving up right 
This is the ascension, the spiritual ascension of the plane of flat earth. Okay. We are all basically growing together. We're growing, learning. Okay, and the ether beneath us is the culmination of all our knowledge, if you will. An ocean of knowledge, literally. Okay? And as it grows, we're moving on up to the east side. Okay? So, the reason why this is the same is because if movement can be measured in what's called a G, okay, gravity also being measured in a G, this is one G, one gravity unit, okay, but acceleration or lateral side to side force is measured in G's, okay, and the reason why I know you don't need to accelerate to have a G is because when you're in a corner, you have a G. Okay? That's why on the Nissan G T R next to the steering wheel. Oh yes, that's a steering wheel. On the center column right there, you got this little console, right? Just like a little nav display like on most cars, okay? But what you have here, you can put it up in gauge mode, or you can put it up in G mode. And what it has is a little guy right here, and it has left, it has right, and it has another one below that. I think right in the middle or something. And it's like front and rear. Okay. And your forward and rear G's from accelerating brake and go right here. But what people are interested in is this left to right G. And it goes up to, I think, one. Okay. And. It's kind of measured, you know, like you're you're really pushing it fucking hard in the corner if you're going like half a G, okay? When a car is just accelerating its ass off and just on the border of grip, taking a turn at like 70 miles an hour, or like doing a really fast, really tight, tight corner, okay? You'll get, you know, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, even, even maybe 0.8 Gs, okay? And if you've been in a car that's cornering fast, that is a significant sensation, okay? Well, a G is a G, all right? So, on a flat Earth, if this is accelerating up, here's the problem. If it's a problem, and I've... I'm about to prove that it's not a problem. If this is accelerating up, what you would basically need is for less molecules to be up there, right? And more molecules to be down here. Dot, dot, dot. Does that look? That's horrible, but you get the idea, right? Without gravity. Did I just draw a pyramid on accident? Sorry about that. Okay. Well. We don't need to guess at this. We can actually do an experiment. In fact, we don't even need to do the experiment. By conjecturing the experiment, if anybody wants to do the experiment, See if it has the same results, they're welcome too. I don't think we need to do the experiment. Okay, just picture this. You're in a car. I'm going to attempt to draw a car. 
without being able to fucking you know, like move the camera sideways so I can see. The, oh, look, there's the paper. I need to stop looking at the camera and look around the camera at the paper. Okay, drawing a freaking car now. All right. So here we have a little beep beep broom broom. If it's going that way at 220 miles an hour and there is a cup of coffee sitting on the dashboard you know with one of them little things that make sure the coffee fucking stays on there because at 200 miles an hour better have a coffee cup the size of my coffee cup if you're gonna hope it's gonna stay there or you know if you drive a cv7 like i do you have a freaking basically a desktop right there and you know well CB7 doesn't go 200 miles an hour, though, does it? But if you had a coffee cup in a car that was going 220 miles an hour, at what angle do you think that coffee would find rest? Do you think that that coffee would eventually just level out that's what science tells us right well that's probably the case because it's not fighting against anything of anywhere near density as its own self okay so you have a, a liquid in here you have a gas right here but if you were to attach a plexiglass cylinder to the front of this car and fill it with air, then put a balloon inside, filled with helium, something that floats. It would have to be floating to the top for this test to be valid. Nullifying the effects of gravity and testing whether or not lateral g-forces will affect buoyancy. See, what will happen is, as this car approaches 200 miles an hour, the air in this cylinder will be affected. The air, and I'm talking, this is vacuumed off, this is not being blown, okay, by the wind resistance as this car is moving, okay, you got to shape it like a big freaking firecracker, I'd say the other thing, but I'm trying to get the dick jokes out of the comments, out of the video, so, anyway, <laughs> you really can't avoid dick jokes in this kind of fucking society that we have here these days, anyway, so, the idea is, the air molecules will settle more densely on this side of the cylinder than on this side of the cylinder, thus causing the balloon to advance ahead of the vehicle as a whole. Now, why is this important? Because on a flat Earth model, we're in the cylinder. And instead of going forward, we're going up. So this gas is basically just suffering from the same G-force that we are. And condensing at the lower levels of the atmosphere. Thus, helium and probably vacuum tube UFO technology would have no problem floating. So, hope you enjoyed my scribble scratch. I just thought that was kind of an interesting topic. And it occurred to me, anniversary of Katrina, buoyancy. Oh, that's just too rich. Thanks, everybody. Like and subscribe. Um, and say a prayer for everybody who lost loved ones and who lost their homes. 
pray for me if you want. I lost everything. But I ain't got nothing to complain about now. So don't pray for me too much. Pray for what we all got to do if you want to pray for me. Y'all take it easy, but don't take it all.